we've had fun today, haven't we? You know, it's when I'm standing here, I'm just thinking about it's usually Bronk that introduces somebody to speak. And it's a great honor to be able to do this. But before I do, I wanted to share just real quick a couple of scriptures that are some of my favorites. And I don't know about you all, but when we finally realize that we really are nothing without Him, that our lives are hopeless and, and that there's nothing in life that's good for anything outside of Him. But when you realize that you have Him in you and that you have His glory and, and His his very being living on the inside of you and you become more and more aware of that you're not alone that he's right there and you can constantly he can constantly be nudging you and letting you know I'm here that he's here with us but I want to share just real quick just a few scriptures and I'm just going to jump down through because it's in Psalms 27 it's one of my favorite Psalms and it says the Psalm of the Lord to David he said the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid and I'll jump down and the other one says one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple we come here service after service and inquiring in this temple but one day we're going to be able to inquire in a temple that far more far more surpasses this place he said when when I say or when thou saidest when the Lord said seek my face and boy is he doing that these days he's calling on us to seek his face more than probably not more than he's ever ever has but we're finally hearing him you know he's been calling on us so forever but we're actually beginning to listen and turn and give him an ear when he said seek my face my heart said to him or to thee thy face Lord I will seek I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and this last one my most favorite wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart wait I say on the Lord and that's what our lives are about just waiting on him so I've said enough and let's do what we came here listen to who we came to hear Miss Donner my dear friend I'm so proud to announce you come on Am I on? Ah, uh, I found it, Mavis. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. I buried my book. I used to pack around a Bible this big, but it took up all my carry-on, so I shrunk it. <laughs> so, Father, I just thank you right now. I thank you for all these lovely ladies that have come out because I know every, each and every one of them has had to walk through a fire of some sort or their family has. So Lord, I thank you for your healing touch. I thank you that every need they have will be met today, spirit, soul, and body. And we all say amen. And with that good word, we'll just tell the devil to take a hike. Uh, sign him out, Miss Candy. <laughs> we sign out devils, the deaf and dumb ones. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been here. We were counting. It's about 10 years right on the nose. Miss Davy was just getting ready to get married. And I couldn't come because all my family, all my children were going to get together for the first time in December that they hadn't done in years. So I declined coming to be with my wild bunch. <laughs> I would like to say that they, by faith, they're all serving God because we won't let go, right? A lot's happened in this 10 years. <laughs> Most of you know I adopted my little grandson 
and he'll be eight in January. He, uh, you know, most people talk about they're going to have to beat the boys off with a stick because they got such awesome looking daughters, so I have to get a stick to beat the girls off <laughs> because one girl already got in trouble in class for writing him love notes, and that was in kindergarten. <laughs> Levi, I love you. <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> it's going to be hard enough for him when he's older. Don't start now. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> but uh, the teacher finally had to put a stop to it. This little girl got really excessive with it. <laughs> Even at home, her mom said she's pasting his picture up on the mirror. And I'm like, take it down. <laughs> Please take it down. He's a very popular young man. And I'm glad that he fits, you know, that, he, that people love him and he fits. But I don't know how the devil operates. He'll want to use that charisma and turn it. Satan will try to by making him too popular to where the good things, the moral things, may not interest him as much. So I've already put a shield up against that. I told him I may, I had to repent with my other children because I wasn't always saved when they were growing up. I wasn't a good light. I wished I could say I was, you know, that the devil just pulled them away. But I'm thanking God they didn't do half the stuff I did. So. You know, uh, I've apologized and repented to all of them. And the one thing I want everyone to remember that feels condemned or guilty because you don't think you were what you should be is that they have the same redeeming Jesus we do. And all they have to do is reach out for him and he'll fill that void. Praise God. That took a whole boatload of guilt off my shoulders. And I tell my kids that too. I said... I didn't tell you to follow my path. <laughs> and it was just, but it was through experience too because I blame my mom for a lot of things. You know, I was hurt, I was angry. It, it always goes down better if you can blame it on someone else. You don't like to think that you just had that capacity. But I did. I found out I had more of a capacity to be mean even than sometimes than she did. When you're totally serving the devil, that's what happens. But I was never wishy-washy. I either served one wholeheartedly or the other one wholeheartedly. I told the devil to get out of my life and repented for it. And now all of that goes to God. And no, I don't care what I've gone through. I don't care what's happening. Nothing is going to ever make me say the devil's greater than my God. Not ever. And we're not perfect. And as far as I know, until we step into our glorified bodies, we're not going to be perfect. How many of you still have the capacity to get ticked off? <laughs> Are we going to be honest? Are you all saints already? <laughs> I'm going to have you come up and pray for me. <laughs> There's a righteous anger. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to hold a grudge. And you don't have to be vindictive. But you can be angry at wrongdoings and not sin. I went a little too far sometimes with that. And I got too angry because I hate seeing children abused. I hate drugs, what they do. I hate the fact that nine times out of ten I tell people when they call me for prayer for that, I tell them, I'll pray for you. I'll even do a deliverance on you if you need it. But I will not do it if you're not 101% serious about letting it go. Because they will come back seven times worse than before. And you don't want to get lost in that. And I know that for a fact because my daughter did that. She got... <laughs> She says, Mom, do you know how many times I said I was saved just to get you off my back? And I said, well, yeah, because you went back and did the same thing the next day. I said, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out you weren't serious. But it finally caught up with her, you know, to where she couldn't shake it. And I, I begged her, you know, to get help, but she didn't. She went and got high on heroin and 
went and wrapped a car around a telephone pole and died. But the Lord revived her. Now her neck was severed. Her head was severed on the inside. Horrible thought. I couldn't hardly wrap my mind around it when I was watching her on the bed. But he revived her. She died at the scene. And the doctor would shake his head. He said, I don't know how he revived her. How they revived her. It shouldn't have happened. And I said, because no child of mine is leaving the planet till they're saved. And I believe with all my heart that God will honor our prayers, even if it's the last, the very last five seconds of their breath. Amen? Amen. Now I know I'll see Hannah in heaven. Actually, the Lord was kind enough to give me a mini vision of her. And she was standing around in this brilliant light looking around. And she goes, so this is what it's like. <laughs> like, you know, she served the devil so long and was so messed up on drugs. She had no idea what it was like to be free. So, I love that. How God does. He'll reach out and touch every one of us where we need it. And I'm, I, I miss her, believe it or not. We used to fight like cats and dogs, but I still miss her. <laughs> but I have the best of her in Levi. That's the one thing she did do that I will always commend her on, is she knew she couldn't raise him, and she gave him to me. But it took a lot of talking, a lot of praying, because she was on her way to see an abortionist, and I prayed, Lord, you can't let her have that abortion, you can't let her have it, can't let her have it. He got an offender bender on the way there, Missed the appointment, and by then she's too far along for him to do it legally. <laughs> and then after that, they tested him and tested him, and they couldn't find one ounce of drugs in his system. The doctor said, this is impossible. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> it's like, come on, you're in a Christian hospital. Step up the faith here. <laughs> so, but he's thriving. He's extremely smart, and sometimes an extremely smart aleck, but, but I love him. And he's, I'm, I'm very grateful that the Lord's given me another chance to make a difference in his life. You know, I, I told her, I said, don't let him go to the system, please. I know that helps a lot of kids in some instances. But I would always wonder where, where my boy was. <laughs> you know? So I'm glad I have him. And I know a lot of you are praying for family members. That's, that's a given. Don't you wish you could just say their name and they'd be saved? But if you keep praying and keep confessing, they will get saved. Amen? Amen. And I don't care. I'd rather them get saved on a deathbed experience than not make it at all. So don't ever quit. I told him you might be saving an old ornery satanic witch like I used to be. <laughs> I mean, what would have happened if people would have quit praying for people like me? Not everybody came out of a good life. Not, I mean, I know people, some of my mom's best friends and people I looked up to as a little kid were skid row winos. <laughs> God loves them. And some of them were kinder than some of the Christians I knew. That's scary, isn't it? That religion has got so mean, they wouldn't help anybody. I remember they told my mom, this one church told my mom when we were all real little, well, if you can clean them up, she didn't have a place to live, we all look like dirt grubbers, if you can get them cleaned up and halfway nice, we'll give you some groceries after church. And I told mom, I was not real big then. I just told her, I said, I'm not hungry, Mom. <laughs> so I didn't want to go. And then they made me go to a little tent revival one time, and this little boy looked at me, and he said, you're going to go to hell, and I punched him right in the nose. <laughs> so we were rolling in the dirt on that <laughs> sawdust. <laughs> I told him, fine. But see... <laughs> That's just the way I was wired. Thank God I'm not that way anymore. I don't punch anybody. And I don't pray bad things on them either. I always pray that to, now when I see people that are vicious, and I'll be honest with you, sometimes I just flat don't like them as people. 
But I always pray that Lord can touch their heart and restore them to him and heal whatever is making them that way. Do I want to hang out with them? No. I don't want to be anybody's punching bag either. So usually they'll either verbally slice you to death or do other things. And I won't give people that place. You don't have to. <laughs> but you do have to pray for them. I think a lot of us, when we get hurt, we withdraw. I did for a little while. I told him, I said, uh, I didn't like quit, quit. I kept praying, but there was nothing in me that, that wanted to do anything else for a while. There was so much things going on. And I think that's one of the reasons the Lord gave me time to pull back with Levi is that I needed to be there for him. I went out the first year he was born, then I quit because the Lord told me to stay home and take care of him, which I found out shortly after why. My lawyer was crooked, and he was supposed to be a Christian, and he took my $4,000 and put it up his nose. <laughs> But I got off light because the place where he worked that trusted him, he embezzled $180,000. So I gave him my brother's book and told him, I, I said, I haven't reported you uh, to the you know, lawyer's thing, the board. I said, I haven't done that. And I said, I hope you get yourself together because he's doing like 15 years in prison. He'll, his little girl is probably a year older than Levi. He won't see her till she's grown nearly. All that for drugs and a fast lifestyle. But I told him before I, <laughs> when I found out he was not, he was taking my money, I just told him, I said, well, you say you're a Christian. I said, even the tax collector gave back that and then some. I said, are you going to give me back my money? No, and don't tell me about my Christianity. He got all defensive, and I said, okay, just saying. If you were going to be, do the right thing, give it back. But he didn't. So I told, I get tickled, because by the time Levi weighed 12 pounds, he was worth $1,000 a pound. That's how much it cost me to get it all done. <laughs> so it was kind of, you know, I told you're very valuable, Levi. <laughs> so... <laughs> But anyway, the lawyer, after he got arrested and after he went to trial, right before he got into prison and can still answer his emails, I told him, I said, I just want you to know I, I forgive you. And I, I said, read my brother's book that I gave you. I said, it'll help you. You have time to read now. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and he just emailed me back and he said, Levi's blessed to have you for a mom. So hopefully, since I didn't react with anger, and for a while there, if I could have reached through the phone, though, I might have choked him. <laughs> Thank God we can't do things like that, isn't it? Okay, I take it back. No. <laughs> How many phones would be broken? Uh, but uh, I'm grateful. The devil's fought me tooth and toenail on all of it. But the Lord always provided and he's always seen me through. You know what blessed me the most? It was our young people through all that. They would come banging on my door at 10 and 11 o'clock at night. Miss Donner, we got some money we want to contribute for your lawyer. <laughs> they come and redid my office so I could put Levi's room next to mine for the nursery. Redid everything for me. The young people. <laughs> there was only one set of old people that helped do anything. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> what kind of example have we become? <laughs> but they came and they, I had to pass so many inspections to adopt my own grandbaby. So they, they safetyed my home. I said, oh my God, I'm safe. I still can't open some of the drawers. No. <laughs> I'm like, Levi, come here and open this for me, will you? <laughs> so, but God's faithful is what I'm trying, you know, this is what I'm saying out of all of it. He is the most faithful God. And there was nights I would, honestly, it would hurt so bad on some stuff, you'd just curl up in a ball and cry. 
the thought of losing Levi after I fought that hard for him was just devastating to me. You know, when the lawyer took off with all the money, we missed two court dates. I didn't even know they were there. I mean, I never got notified. I tried getting a hold of the opposition. Can you tell me what we're doing? <laughs> so I can be at court. And the guy that recommended him felt so bad. He said, I don't typically do adoptions. He said, but since I recommended that guy, I'll do it. And, you know, I paid him, of course. I bet it wasn't free. But he did it. The judge gave us, he gave us a judge that he knew. <laughs> and everything that took me over three years to get done with the other guy got done in five months. Isn't that something? He did, the judge couldn't even figure out why it hadn't happened because all the home studies had been done. They'd been approved. They'd been... But I found out one thing about the system. If, if you don't get the right person, they won't talk to you. <laughs> they won't tell you nothing. And I, that's sad because I genuinely was just trying to find out what do I need to do? How do I go about this since my lawyer cheated me? <laughs> and found that he cheated so many people. I'm praying that nobody lost the adoptions because of him. Because it, it takes, for one, I think they charge too much for adoptions. They have the homes plum full of kids that need homes. And they have to fit all this criteria. I told my granddaughter, because my granddaughter was going to have a baby, or had a baby about the same time, I said, you guys would have never got to keep it. <laughs> I said, she's a good mama and he's a good dad, but I said, you didn't safety-proof your house. You didn't have this much money in the bank. I said, and you didn't have the, the, you know, car right car seat. I mean, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> I said, you wouldn't have passed the inspection. And we started laughing. I said, because my kids shouldn't be living according to that. You remember back in the day, we had no car seats. No seat belts. I'm thanking God we have them now. But it's just, I think we need, we need the system, but the system needs Jesus. <laughs> and so, and uh, my brother and his nephew, Jaden, remind me of that because she's become a policewoman. And I think it's awesome, by the way. But my brother and my nephew were in it for a lot of years. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit with you in it, you're going to get hard. And my brother fought that. My nephew fought that. Because you see so many injustices, you know. And you just see, just plain, for lack of a better word, just stupid, stupid mistakes. You know? <laughs> I, I don't watch the news too much, but once in a while I do just because the Lord said, this is what it's like out there. Are you still praying? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> because you're seeing kids being tortured, dumped, and people going to hell. It's just sad. Getting killed. I cry anymore when people get killed because my first thought is, are they saved? And then you have preachers telling them it's okay to be gay, it's okay to do witchcraft, it's okay to be a Wiccan. Uh, a lady contacted me from New England. She said, there's witches pushing it now that it's okay to be a witch and a Christian. And I said, that's just stupid. Did they not read their Bible? I mean, come on. Why would... They want to keep the best of both worlds, you know, except the one will take them to hell. I just... And you'd be amazed at how many people with big degrees are Wiccans. I had... A, I knew a lady one time because she found out I used to be a Satanist and a witch. She goes, well, I used to be a Wiccan. And I said, yeah, we used to have them for lunch. <laughs> uh, she says, well, we were good witches. I said, honey, there's no such thing as a good witch. I mean, come on, you're a Christian now. You've got to know there's no such thing as a good witch. <laughs> Tells you how the devil works. 
you know, you want to excuse what you were? Don't. I, like I tell Levi, I'll tell him, you're going to get in trouble either way, but you're not going to get in as much trouble if you tell me the truth. And that's, I think God feels the same way. Just fess up. If you messed up, tell him, I messed up. Forgive me. He will. Just, I mean, how many of you have ever sat and cried and wondered if you went too far to come back? I have. When I first fell away from God years and years ago, I fell away for nearly four years. Got hurt so bad I just had enough. And I would get to drinking. That's why I know about addictions. We were I was talking with Yolanda about it. The psych and my granddaughter took psychology as well. But it was I never wanted to go back to witchcraft. Not ever. Not even when I fell away from God. I'd always tell the, the devil, you know. I might have disappointed God, but I still hate you. <laughs> I'd be drunk though. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worse. And then my friend was in a, a Pentecostal that fell. One of my friends in Oregon would both be drunk on the phone. I know, isn't it awful? <laughs> I love God, but I went too far. <laughs> oh, what a mess. I tell the Lord, you've got to have a, a lot of patience and a huge sense of humor. But through all that, not once did I want to go back and serve, you know, like, in my mind, witchcraft and Satanism and stuff that was paying homage to the devil. I didn't want to do that. It was bad enough what I was doing. But boy, I tell you what, there's nothing worse than a backslidden drunk. Miserable, the most miserable people on the planet is people that run from God. Because the biggest fear they have is that they can't come back. I just knew if I come back, he wouldn't love me as much as he used to. <laughs> and, you know, I wasn't very old in the Lord when I fell to begin with. And we have giftings. Everybody has giftings. God's going to use you, and he loves you, and he's not ever going to repent for the gift he's given you. Isn't that awesome? Because I've had people give me gifts, and as soon as they get mad, I want it back. <laughs> And so me being the adult, mature person that I am, I said, okay, Indian giver, you can have it back. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, but it's, it's funny. I mean, people are funny. you got to find the humor in everything. But some people gave me a website until I, they, they did good. It was awesome until I didn't, didn't do what they wanted. And I never did. You know, it's okay until I rocked their boat. And by rocking the boat, it was that I was for the, our current president. I said he had a right to recovery just like anyone else. I said, and the fact that he's got the Bible back in our nation is awesome. And I like tell it like this kind of people. <laughs> it's just part of my DNA, I guess. But they got mad because, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't post my letter that I wrote about that. And then they gave me 30 days to find a new server, a new somebody to do my web. Well, God knew this, and he intervened. He got uh, this young man, redid my whole web, did it better. <laughs> it's easier to navigate. And he did it just to bless me, one of my kids there at the church. And I'm, I'm just grateful because... Young people have so much current savvy that I don't have. <laughs> As I just asked Mavis, where's the switch? How do I turn it on? <laughs> I forgot. I haven't wore one in 10 years nearly. But um, he's faithful. And whatever situation you're in now, if you trust him, he's going to pull you out of it. He'll meet the needs that you need. I couldn't believe how fast I got the lawyer paid off. Couldn't believe it. And keeping Levi, I got him in a Christian school. Keeping him in a school like that, and it's top rated, is supernatural. Because, you know, I'm not amongst the rich and famous. <laughs> 
But I'm grateful because I told the Lord, I said, I know he's in, easily influenced by different things. And I want him in a place where they're always lifting Jesus up. And they do. But even on a, a standard, out of 500 schools, their school come in fifth in the SAT test. And it's a small school. It's more like a family. 300 people is all. And I'm not against public schools. I, I am against some of the ones in Tulsa, though. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we're supposed to be the Bible Belt, but there's a liberal there. It scares you. And now they're closing down schools and combining them with other schools. And some, some of those poor teachers have 40, nearly 50 students per class. I don't want Levi in that. I don't want him under that influence either. And it's, it's just devastating to watch what the devil's doing to young people that way. And how many of them actually believe it's okay to be gay? It's okay to be. Uh, it's okay to be so many things that it's not okay to be. And I told, I tried to tell Levi that too scripturally. I, that's what I'm telling him. Tell me the truth. I said, Levi, the Lord hates a liar. I said, He hateth a liar. I said, Don't lie. He said, Well, everybody lies, Mom. And I said, Yeah, but not like that. <laughs> I mean, I understand if somebody comes up to you and they're wearing something god-awful and they ask if it looks good and you go, oh yeah, it looks good on you. <laughs> well, that may not be a lie because it may look good on them. It's just you wouldn't wear it. <laughs> but I mean, you don't, he doesn't expect us to de deliberately hurt people. Uh, I always tell people I'm not a fashion genius. And the one thing I hate the most is have people that have me guess their age. Oh, I always try to go 10 years younger. <laughs> and I did that to a lady one time. She said, guess how old I am? And I went 10 years younger. And she said, you're right on the nose. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> it would have been horrible had I said what I really thought. <laughs> It would have devastated her, but this way she was happy, I was happy, I got off the hook. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I don't like hurting people. I don't like, I remember my mom, she always struggled with her weight. She was five foot one, three quarters, and weighed 215 pounds. Pretty solid lady, but big, short-legged long torso so she carried it pretty good and uh, she dressed up one day and I always thought she looked so pretty in the orchid colors you know just because she had brown hair and brown eyes and those are my favorite colors eyes brown <laughs> and uh, some lady walked up to her and said oh are you pregnant again and it just devastated my mom she battled depression anyway, and when she got too depressed, she went drinking. So I, I don't like that kind of stuff. And uh, they find out real quick if they try it on me. So <laughs> one lady walked up to me one time and said, don't do me a favor. I go, okay, don't cut your hair that short again. You're too fat to wear it like that. And I said, oh, honey, I bet you couldn't wait all day to get to church to tell me that, could you? I said, you feel better now? Are you all right? <laughs> My brother Steve was standing there. He about faced. He said, I can't believe she said that to you. And I was skinnier then than I am now. I said, just tells you it's an assignment. <laughs> they come after me with a fat devil. <laughs> Shall we render them useless? No pun intended on the render. <laughs> but see, people at church can have mean spirits too. Some people take it to heart everything. If somebody that's a Christian tells them, I'm saying, weigh it. I said, if you pray and you read your Bible, you're going to know if somebody's either really wanting to help you or really wanting to destroy you. And there's just as many catty men, too, as there is women. <laughs> I have discovered. Fortunately, 
we got ones like Alan and Gary and Tim and all them that tell, you know, give an example to young men on how to treat women. Uh, they show respect. And I think both sides need to be shown respect. Otherwise, what are your kids going to do? You know, see some woman reaming their husband out. I've seen this in McDonald's, of all places. She was just going off with all the kind of languages you could want to hear, and her kids sat there listening to her do that to her husband. And I thought, boy, you'd be glad that he didn't hit you. <laughs> Back in the day, I probably would have popped your mouth. Good thing that day's over. But I told Levi, I said, you don't ever talk that way to people. Now, parking lots, isn't that the best place to meet angry people? <laughs> you find them everywhere. I couldn't believe it. I like to park by the grocery cart so I don't have to walk halfway across the universe to put my cart up because I don't like leaving them out. Well, I parked in, but I know, because I'm so slim and trim, if I get this close, I'm not going to be able to get out of my car. <laughs> so I park a little further over. Well, this lady pulls up by me, and she's banging on her window and yelling, and Levi had his tablet on, and I'm telling him to turn it off, put it under the seat we're going in. So I didn't hear her. And man, she was screaming, banging on that window. And I found that she was yelling at me. <laughs> And the guy in the parking lot that was putting away cars, he thought she was yelling at him. And so when I get out of the car, she says, didn't you hear me? And I go, no. <laughs> she said, you parked too close. And I said, no, you did. And I said, but if I get any closer to the cart rack, I said, I'm not going to be able to get out. And I said, and he was playing his tablet. And I said, I didn't hear what you were saying. And why would I think you're talking to me? I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> I, Levi was like <laughs> so she gets mad and she pulls forward into the next one I said boy that had to hurt you had to walk a whole extra six feet <laughs> this, you know and the guy that was putting away cars he said lady are you alright I said oh I've never been better there's one in every bunch I mean you're going to run into somebody like that sometime but it didn't, Levi's just like, are you upset, Mom? Are you scared? I go, heavens no, Levi. I said, now you know what it sounds like when you do that. <laughs> I said, it's not very nice, is it? And he goes, no. <laughs> so I said, thank you, Lord. You gave Levi another life lesson and I wasn't the one yelling. <laughs> so, But I try to bring the Lord in with everything that me and Levi do. Because I want him to know there's an accountability. If you know to do good, do it. I didn't get mad at that lady. I said, Levi, you got to feel sorry for people like that. They're miserable. I said, well, let's just pray that God can touch them. Oh, wow. They were pretty mean to you, Mom. He was getting offended for me. At that age. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay, really. I used to have to tell my granddaughter, Nikki, all the time, don't get offended for me. I said, I'm not worth your salvation. What? I said, if you get offended, you're going to have a lot of trouble. You're going to open the door to the devil. Might as well give him a handwritten stamp of approval invitation to come and destroy. One lady got mad at me because I said, if you keep up at the rate you're doing, you might as well just kiss the devil on the lips because he's coming. I said, you can't do that to people and think that it's going to please God. God loves us. And if nobody believes me, you can look it up. I'm not going to look it up for you, though. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we all know he loves us. But there's so many hurting people out there and so many messed up. They're thinking if drugs didn't mess them up, just the false doctrines and things that are out there right now have. So I feel really bad. It's just like if we don't pursue our families so that their generation will pursue their upcoming families. He said, train a child up in the way he should go and he'll not depart from it. He'll come back. And that's what I'm believing for my son. I got some, but one son that's not serving right now, he backslid. But 
his days are numbered. And I told him that. Because we come over to talk, and I said, he said, Mom, you're not talking much. And I said, well, you said you didn't believe in God anymore, and that's all I know to talk about. <laughs> he, said, he said, Mom, you wouldn't be you if you didn't talk about Jesus. Go ahead. <laughs> and it's true. And his, unfortunately, his wife got hurt in a church and fell away. You know, because they told her, they actually told her the truth, but she couldn't receive it. And so she's telling me all about it and how God, everybody put God in a box because everybody that was just shacking up or doing this and that wasn't going to go to hell. And I said, excuse me? I said, honey, I've done all those things that you've talked about. And I said, and I knew God loved me. You know, when I got saved, I knew he loved me even then. And I said, but he can't change his word for you or for me. He said, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not going to change. And I said, so as much as he loves you, I said, if, if this doesn't change, you're not going to make it. And I was with a lot of sorrow saying that because you don't want to lose anybody. And then I quit talking about any of it. I didn't want to push her over the edge, you know, thinking, because I'm not judging her. I love her. She's, a, you know, she, she has a lot of love in her heart. It just needs to be channeled to the right place. But you can't do all those things. <laughs> and serve God at the same time and be a success in God. You can't have two masters. <laughs> I told a Satanist that one time. It really ticked her off. Actually, I let her stay at my house. And she said, don't pray for me. And I said, don't tell me what to do. I'm older than you. Crazy thing. <laughs> And then a friend of hers died. She said, well, I guess you're glad, all you Christians are glad when a Satanist died. And I said, no, actually, I feel worse for them than I would if one of my fellow Christians died. Really? I said, yeah. I said, I know where they're going if they didn't repent. <laughs> she said, well, you're different. I said, so they say. I want you guys to agree that God's increasing you for discernment. Because the devil's going to start coming more and more as an angel of light. And that bothers me. Because there's so many. You know, you get somebody rich and famous living their life, so, but then they'll say, oh yeah, I believe in God, it's all good, and you can have your cake and eat it too. Well, no. The cake you just ate's poison. <laughs> You can't have it all. You can have it all with Jesus. And I know there's people in that industry that are genuinely saved. But most of the time, it gets watered down to a degree that if they really, really knew what was pleasing the Lord, they couldn't do or even do some of the scenes that they do. So I believe it or not, I actually pray for them too because I like a good movie. <laughs> and so all of them aren't good. And I love it that Levi's learning the difference because uh, he's going to a Christian school, but there's some of them there. Uh, like one lady had a birthday party for her boy, and it was all Harry Potter. And Levi, since the kid was his best friend, he told him, he said, that's not good for you, that's witchcraft. <laughs> so I'm like, Yes. <laughs> It's always good to know that what you've done has made a dent. But I've showed Levi scriptures where witchcraft isn't good. And it's neat because he'll sit there and tell me, well, the Bible's all true, Mom. And I said, thank you. It is. And then he will he got in trouble one day and he looked at me real serious. I mean, he's serious. Mom, don't judge me. <laughs> I'm like, about what? And he said, well, you told me this, this, and that. He said, but don't judge me. I said, I'm not judging you. I'm correcting you. There's a difference. What's the difference? I said, judging would be assuming you're a way that you're not. And I said, and, and condemning you for it, judging you. I said, you did something wrong, and you're in deep trouble. That's not a judgment, honey. That's discipline. <laughs> oh, well, do you forgive me? 
of course I forgive you, but you're still going to get a spanking. <laughs> I said, you'll get it a lot worse, though, if you don't tell me the truth. Amen? That's why I tell people, I said, you know, you could probably fool me at some point in time or another. You're never going to fool God. And that's the one you've got to be careful of. <laughs> so, I guess tell people, you know, just, just watch what you're doing. I want to... I'm going to finish up here pretty soon, but I'd like to know if there's any of you that needs prayer or wants prayer for anything. I'd be happy to pray with you before I shut it down. I think I might have went over ten minutes. Oh, I did good. <laughs> Can't shut me up. But the one thing I want to tell you is, like I said, don't believe every spirit, even if they look good. Even if they can sound good to a degree. I get so tired of that sloppy grace garbage. And I get tired of the ones saying, Oh, well, he'll love you and it's okay. You just got to confess Jesus as your Lord. It's okay to be gay. It's okay to be this. It's not. And, and we're terribly wrong. I don't think we should mistreat any of them. I don't. Because how are they going to know God's love if we do? Unfortunately, there was some people in Tulsa that picketed a gay gathering and God hates you, you're going to hell. And they did that with the saintness that come out of the closet too. And I said, you guys, you're giving the devil everything he wants. Everything by treating them like that. I said, well, besides, keep praying for him. You might save an old witch like me or an old saintness like me. You don't know. I mean, I don't know who actually prayed me in. It was somebody that really had a heart for the lost. And it's like, I'm grateful. I want to meet him in heaven. I know my brother prayed for me too, but, you know, I know other people were praying, not, not just him. And we all know First John, because Bronx said, you guys, our first John certified. Because he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many a false prophet are gone out into the world, and it's true. And this is the one in Ephesians, because this is why it's so important to have the discernment. It's because, like in Ephesians 5.16, it says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Where can you look that you don't see blatant sin? Where? I mean, it's in the schools. Things that used to be PG-13, any kid could watch. And now I'm like, oh my God, did you see what they just did in a PG-13 movie? I've got up and walked out. Because I wasn't smart enough to Google it and find out what language and stuff it had. <laughs> Now I do. That's one thing I love about Levi. He's already pretty computer savvy. He says, when he was four years old, my daughter's a computer whiz, my oldest daughter. And that's how he won her over because she didn't see much. You know, she lives in Michigan. We went to visit her and he says, Sister Rena, <laughs> do you have Wi-Fi? And do you have Google? <laughs> and I'm like, it, it melted her. <laughs> He's a smart kid, but keeping him out of the clutches of the devil is my goal. So you can all agree with me that Levi will not fall short in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I know he wants to do something. He wants... Huh. <laughs>